Hello and wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a discovery that we made back in 1995. The first ever natural laser. That's right, laser in space. Something that we've talked about in a previous video, but something that I wanted to focus on today in more detail. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So what exactly did we discover back in 1995? Well, it's actually um, a star, and specifically a very unusual star that seems to emit very unusual type of radiation that we didn't really think was possible naturally. We're talking about the lasers. Now, this is something that we predicted for a long time, but we just couldn't really detect it anywhere until uh, the scientists flying this very unusual observatory called Kuiper uh, airborne observatory, which actually looks exactly like this. It's basically an airplane that has a telescope inside and a radio antenna as well. Um, was able to actually detect this very interesting uh, radiation that we technically call laser radiation. Now, lasers, as I've explained in the previous video, are different from typical waves in that they're very, very one directional. They don't spread very much. They also always have pretty much the same wavelength or same color and they uh, also have same phase. So all of the waves are aligned. Now, where exactly was it? Well, it was actually around a very large, very massive and very powerful star known as MWC 349. Unfortunately, these stars are not actually present in any of the simulations I usually look at, but they're um, stars that are similar to these bright stars you see right here. Uh, this right here is uh, one of the Pleiades sister stars, and pretty much all of them are beast B-type stars. They're very, very bright, very powerful, very massive, and they all have this tremendously large and tremendously beautiful spectrum of colors. But the type of, of a star that MWC349 is, is even more dramatic than this. They are even more massive, more unpredictable, and to some extent more unstable. They are sometimes referred to as BE stars, and uh, they have what's known as a forbidden spectrum. Basically, they have some spectra that are not very well explained. Now, unfortunately, Space Engine doesn't really show you what exactly that star has in, a, in the system that makes it produce those lasers. Uh, although... If you look really closely here, you'll see that there's a bit of a dust cloud. And this is actually why I brought you to play this sector, because this is kind of what is responsible for producing these unusual space lasers. And so here we're going to go to Universe Sandbox, and I'm going to try to recreate for you what we actually are seeing in MWC 349. So here's one thing I have to start with. First of all, we don't know if this is a very young star that's still growing and will become a star system with planets and so on, or if this is a star that's about to end and is basically spewing out a lot of dust into the outer uh, regions of space. Which is kind of interesting, because you'd think that scientists could be actually able to tell this, but unfortunately we can't really predict this just yet. But what we know is that it has a cloud of materials around it, and most importantly, it basically has a ring or some sort of a ring-like shape around the star. Now, this is why we're not sure if this is a young star or an old star, because both can technically have this. What we do know is that this is a very bright star. It's about 400,000 times brighter than our sun. It's also very hot. It's about 24,000 degrees Kelvin, which is several times higher than the sun. And on top of this, it has a partner, which is probably why it has these rings here. So it has a, a partner that's also very massive, probably about 8 to maybe 15 masses of the sun, so we're gonna just place this random star here. It's orbiting somewhere here, um, and what it's responsible for is sending a lot of this dust stuff that's trying to escape back toward this star, thus helping it create this ring. Now, all of this sort of acts on each other and creates this very unusual formation where you have um, hydrogen gas 
forming almost like a ring here. And you have a lot of um, ultra wide radiation coming off this very powerful star. And also infrared radiation coming off both this star and the companion star. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, first of all, hydrogen can actually be quite easily excited by ultraviolet radiation and can reach a state of, well, it's actually called state of excitement. And when this state of excitement receives certain wavelengths, it actually releases an, uh, a photon, in other words, energy, and that photon will always have the same wavelength and the same sort of phase and so on. And if you do this with several or many, many atoms of hydrogen, you'll create essentially a laser. You'll literally make light amplified by something else, in, in this case, hydrogen gas. Now, this is kind of what's happening here. So we have the star in the middle exciting the molecules and either star in the middle or this companion star then sending it over the edge and releasing all of these lasers that are coming off in every single direction. We can kind of try to simulate this by sending off a few pulses from here. So here I can actually try to create these lasers by basically clicking this button a few times. And so these are the lasers coming off uh, the actual dust disk around the star. And we can then detect them from our planet Earth. And this is exactly what happened back in 1995 for the first time in history. Since then, as I've mentioned in the previous video, we've actually discovered quite a few, but this was the first one, and this one was um, at a distance of about 4,500 light years, so it's actually pretty far. When we discovered this, we didn't really know what to think of this at first, until we were able to explain how all of this works and why we're seeing these lasers. Because until then, we actually thought it was maybe just maybe the only possible in the lab. But except for all of this, there's actually a few unanswered questions, and specifically one of these questions is in relation to the actual origin of the star. I'm gonna go back to Space Engine just to demonstrate this. So right now we are in the location where there are a lot of uh, higher energy stars, a lot of gas and a lot of material, because this is kind of uh, where all of it was made. It's this region of space that you could refer to as a starburst region, where stars are just made. But the star we discovered was really, 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 really far away from everything. And we don't really know why, because it's a very massive star, it has a lot of gas, it has a lot of energy, it produces these lasers, but it's just not near anything. And so the scientists um, basically think there are two possible theories. One is that it used to be in one of these regions, specifically maybe one a very well-known region known as Cygnus OB2, which is one of the biggest starburst regions known to us. And it's also a famous region for these bright B and A type stars. But the uh, possible explanation here is that this star was kicked out by something, possibly like a black hole or some other really massive body that kicked it out to a very far away distance. But the second explanation is that it's just located in a region where there's just a lot of gas that suddenly started coalescing into this very large massive star, meaning that this star is actually really young and not old at all. And in that case, it's probably going to develop into planetary system eventually because all of this gas is going to coalesce into planetary bodies and create, uh, well, possibly a lot of gas giants, but also other planets, perhaps even terrestrial planets. Uh, but what is interesting is that over time, this star has lost a lot of mass. It, as a matter of fact, it lost so much mass that the companion star that I placed here earlier, this one right here, is no longer attached to it. As a matter of fact, it seems to be moving away from the central star. So there's a lot of really interesting things going on here. A lot of really hard to explain things. And I guess the biggest one is, of course, the fact that it's producing lasers. All of this is still a very theoretical explanation. It's still not really proven uh, practically. We haven't really been able to generate any of this or detect this very specifically, or even see these disks. These are all just kind of um, theoretical explanations. But until we are able to zoom into one of these stars and actually see specifically what's happening right there in the middle where you have all of this stuff going on, which is something that we might be able to do with one of the new telescopes, until we are able to see the actual star and its uh, nearby regions, we won't be able to tell for sure what's happening there. 
All we know is that it's a large massive star, it's very bright, and it seems to be shooting out lasers in all directions, some of them come to Earth. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about MWC-349, also known as the first ever discovered natural laser. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who just watches space videos. Do consider supporting this channel on Patreon and come back tomorrow because there's going to be something else you might have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.